All right, then, to Australia we go, and Daryl Mitchell joins us again on the program. Daryl, welcome to the show again, mate. Hey, mate, how you going? I'm gutted. I've got, I got to say that. I'm bloody gutted. I mean, obviously, I'm not as gutted as you guys. I mean, all know that, but you sit there, yell at the TV. You know what it's like? It was just frustrating last night, mate. We just didn't play our best cricket, did we? Yeah, obviously, that's uh, the nature of finals cricket and, and the pressure that that brings. That um, Yeah, we obviously would have loved to have walked away with a win and be heading to a final in a few days' time, but... Um, yeah, someone's got to lose, and unfortunately it was us. Happy with the decision to bat first? Yeah, I think it was. Um, you know, it was a used wicket, uh, which had been played on throughout the tournament, so we always knew it was going to get harder to bat on. Um, and also that as the ball gets older, it gets harder to bat on. So, no, we're really happy with the decision, and, and also even with the total that we got to 150, that sort of um, the stats show that that was probably about bang on for that how the wicket was playing, and um, yeah, we just missed a couple of key moments and, and that's probably what's cost us. I think most of us who are messaging were thinking hopefully around about 160 or thinking we were maybe 10 to 15 short. So that's interesting you say that to me because at halftime uh, when Ian Smith was interviewing Devin Conway as well, he said that you thought he thought that was defendable. Yeah, no, nah, like we obviously, you do a lot of planning and detail around games beforehand and, and it did show that the used wickets uh, at the SCG was around that 150 mark. And look, you always want more runs, let's be honest. But um, I thought the way Pakistan fielded and bowled, especially toward the, in the power play and towards the end there, was was pretty special. And um, yeah, you take your hat off to them, but, but they deserve the win. Daryl Mitchell with us. Black Caps lost in the semi last night. <sighs> they Looking at all of their stats, take away the first game against India, I don't think they'd conceded more than 130 runs in any of the other games. So to score 150, well, you would have thought, hell, that's actually not bad. Yeah, I guess you, you expect that when you come up into a semi-final of a World Cup that, um, yeah, the teams are going to be playing against are pretty bloody good. So, um, yeah, no, nah, for us, we're really happy with, with how we set the game up. Um, we we would have loved it. Love to have scored 230 like I guess the rest of the public would have, but um, yeah, that's the nature of T20 cricket, is, especially in tournaments that um, yeah, the wickets do get tied towards the end of tournaments and it, it can be quite challenging at times. Another 50 for you in a really important game in a World Cup semi final, but this because we lose, does it? I mean, I, I don't know what the question I'm meant to be asking you here. Does it mean that much to you? I mean, it's not something you hang your hat on, is it? Because you lose the game. Yeah, I, I think you know me as a as a person that I'm a competitor and, and I love I love winning moments and um, yeah, obviously gutted to have lost and and that's why we play the game on the big stage is to be able to try to win games. So um, yeah, uh, would have loved to have gone a different way, but that's the nature of sport is that there has to be a winner and a loser. And I'm just really proud of of how we as Kiwis went out there and, and tried to take it on to the world. And, um, albeit we would love to have gone one further, but, um, yeah, that's the nature of sport. 50, well, I think it's half 35 or something like that. But the amazing thing was with your innings, you hit one six and I think three fours. So it really was difficult, wasn't it? I mean, you, you aerialed it a lot. There was a couple that dropped nicely for you. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, again, the nature of used wickets in tournaments and and especially um, on these Australian grounds, which are a lot bigger than, than what we're used to in New Zealand. You've got to, I guess go about it slightly differently in terms of recognising that you're not going to be able to hit all the sixes all the time. Um, you've got to find ways to hit gaps and run twos and keep trying to generate a strike rate in different ways. And um, Yeah, I thought we as, we as a group throughout the whole tournament really adapted well to that and, and we're really proud of, of how we were going about our business and we just came up against a better opposition on the day. I mean, see the nature of the ball at the end of our um, innings though. It was covered in mud. I hadn't seen that before. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know if it was mud. It was obviously a very, very abrasive surface, and um, yeah, I think the the ball was pretty chewed up from from being a used wicket. And um, yeah, they they utilised the reverse swing really well. At what stage did you feel like it was slipping away? Because I mean, you know, Bubba hits the first one for four, and then they're 105 without loss. But he really took to Trent, didn't he? I mean, that over, I think he got about 18 off that, which was so unusual to see Trent Bolt hit like that. I mean, when did it feel to you that it was just uh, out of reach? No, I think one thing as a group is that we know, especially in finals cricket, that if you take it deep and, and keep putting pressure back on the opposition, that um, there were some, some moments there that, that could turn the game. And, and even heading into the last three overs where they needed 18 or 20 runs, I uh, definitely still felt like we're a chance if we could you know, put the pressure on them, build up a couple of dots and, and ask, ask them to see what decision-making they do. And, um, yeah, look, at, I... I think you look back now and you think, yeah, maybe it was just meant to be that Pakistan were going to win that game looking back. But at the time, we definitely felt like we were in the hunt right to the end. 
Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things they do at, at world tournaments, isn't it? It's not the first time that they claw their way into the semi-finals, then they save the best. I mean, that was easily the best performance by them, no question. No question so far. Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing experience. I've, I've never experienced uh, an SDG crowd like that. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was a cool atmosphere and it definitely took a few moments there where you look up and you just think, you know, this is World Cup semi-final and, yeah, it's literally 95% Pakistan crowd. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was amazing to be a part of and Albeit we, we, the result didn't go away, it will definitely be an experience that will sit with me for the rest of my life. I don't know what that song they kept playing, that Pakistan, Pakistan song, but they just kept playing it. The crowd went nuts every time they did. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it was incredible. And, yeah, look, obviously you would love to be winning in those moments, mm. but at the same time you do you do look up and you think that, you now as a 10-year-old kid, if you said you'd be in a World Cup semi and, and you're standing out in the field atmosphere like this, you'd, you'd probably pinch yourself. Daryl Mitchell, there's just a couple of questions. I'll let you go, mate. I mean, so what does it take now to get over the to over, over the hump? Because we've had semis, we've had finals, and things. I mean, we're so goddamn close, white ball. Look, I, I think it's the nature of tournament sport, and and the way it works is that yeah, we, I think we're competing really well. We're playing the style of cricket that we want to play, and as long as we keep being consistent with that, then we will win trophies and, and win important games. We've we've won many important games before, and and I know we will do it again. And and I'm sure when it's meant to be, it, it will happen. It's just the, the nature of sport, especially a small country taking on the world. But, um, yeah, we're going to go through some tough times, but we're also going to have some good times as well. Are you glad you're not playing a third and fourth place playoff? I think it's the only World Cup in the world that doesn't have that match. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything worse than playing a third and fourth place game. So it's quite nice that uh be heading home tonight and be able to mow my lawns. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, the weather is hot and humid. It's muggy as hell, mate. They'll be waist high. The other thing that was absolutely delightful is Mrs. Yu was in the crowd um, and and young D. Mitch with the Mitchell on the back. Uh, we saw lots of shots of him as well. He seemed happy regardless, mate. Yeah, no, mate. It's not, always nice to have the girls over here and I think that's the cool thing, especially with COVID and bubbles the last few years, is that you don't get to spend a lot of time at home. So it's nice to have them here and, and for them to experience a World Cup and... Um, I'm not sure if I think they're probably a bit young to remember it, but um, mm-hmm. no, it's, it's, it's nice to have them here, that's for sure. You always play with such pride for us. I've told you that before. I love the way that you play for our country, mate. I know it's just a bummer. And if I feel like I feel like a bummer, I don't know what to say to you, pal. Thank, thank you so much anyway. No, no worries. And yeah, no, thanks. Thank you for everyone for their support. I, I know us as a group, we're really, we, we love having all the support from everyone around the world, especially Kiwis back home. And it was really proud to represent our country on the world stage. Thank you so much, Daryl. Appreciate that enormously, mate. That's Daryl Mitchell. Just came in live there, ladies and gentlemen. We just got the call from Willie. Thank you so much, New Zealand Cricket, for getting that organised. And he's my captain, that boy there. He's my captain. He's my skipper. Uh, I would, uh, I'd love him to be appointed white ball skipper. Kane can still be the test skipper. Kane can play the test matches. But that guy there, to me, is the future of New Zealand cricket.